is a time to be bold. It comes from China. Coronavirus pandemic alert, UK and Italy hit. A time of disruption in the life of our country. We will beat the coronavirus and we will beat it together. Through the radio, we can all talk to each other and maybe help each other out. I want to thank Isle of Wight radio listeners for how much they've engaged with this. It is time to join the nation to clap for our carers. It's a bit mad, man. Like, you have up days, down days, all of the in-between. Of course, you know that you can rely on us. National treasure, Colonel Tom Moore. Good morning, Colonel Tom. Good morning, Dale. Is Harry Styles, everyone. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Harry, where in the world are you, mate? I'm actually in California. You're yeah. self-isolating over there. I got stuck. The world's biggest radio rave, Kiss Fest. Will you be hitting it on here, First Minister? I'm not letting Peter anywhere near <laughs> my heel. <laughs> the dog is literally eating through her wires. That's oh, pretty <laughs> Take your right hand, take your left hand, sprinkle on some water while you do the hand dance. Some musical inspiration during the lockdown. You are a key worker, your girlfriend is a key worker. I'm opening yes. number 10. <laughs> oh, make me a millionaire! Tommy! No, you won't! <laughs> I'm Professor Green, bringing you help and advice during the coronavirus pandemic. 60 second support. If you're struggling, it's important to talk about it. So right now, let's join together across the UK and reach out to someone. Welcome to Tuning In Automotive. Thanks for joining us for a packed hour where we'll be hearing from a wide range of speakers with sessions from auto and marketing consultant Chris Hawken, Hits breakfast presenter Fleur East, in conversation with Paul Gerrard, Global's creative director Joe McCrosty, and Radio Center's Mark Barber, Judith Spilsbury, and Camilla Kamara. But our first session is from Lucy Barrett. As Radio Center's client director, Lucy champions the value and impact of commercial radio amongst advertisers and agencies. Her mission is to help advertisers see radio differently. Today, Lucy will provide an overview of the radio industry. Good morning, welcome to Tuning In. My name is Lucy Barrett and I'm the client director here at Radio Center. So I'm going to give you a very brief presentation on what's going on in the audio market, listening where radio fits in in the rest of the audio landscape, and take you through a little bit of research that we at Radio Center have done on consumer mood and consumer spending. So looking at the radio landscape, more so now than ever before, radio and audio is relevant. From podcast to streaming to voice recognition, audio is such a core part of our lives and that's true for radio too. What distinguishes radio is the intimate relationship that listeners have with it. And that's probably why just under 90% of the population tune in to radio every week. Now, 36 million of those are commercial radio listeners, and they listen on average to 13 hours every week. Now, when we compare this with other medium, I often look at what's probably created the most disruption in the market, and that is social media. And over the last 10 years, we've obviously had a lot of disruption in our sector. And it is reassuring to know that actually time spent with radio is higher than what is spent with social media in the UK. So people spend more time listening to radio than they do looking at social media. And that probably has a lot to do with trust. So actually radio is the most trusted brand. It's official across all of Europe. So the European Commission do a, a survey every year, the a Eurobarometer survey, where they look at uh, various things and trust is one of the things that they look at. And radio comes out top, but it didn't just come out top this year. It's come out top every year for the last decade. So let's take a look at the radio landscape. So how has on-demand affected radio? Well, firstly, I'm going to take you through all total listening. So if you look at the top two on the left-hand side, so that's the grey and the green colours, that's what I call owned music. So that's digital tracks, so iTunes and CDs and that kind of stuff. So since the spring of 2016, which is probably uh, the beginning of, uh, of the real rise of streaming services, you will see that there's been a huge shift. So the yellow is on the on-demand music services and the black is podcasts. And you will see that absolutely 
that uh, streaming service has increased a, a, a lot, really squeezing the owned music. So we have all changed our habits. We don't tend to buy music to keep anymore. We tend to stream it. But what happens when I put radio back into the equation? Well, as you'll see, live radio is not only is it incredibly stable over the same period, but actually it dominates. So we have around 75% a slice of the pie for weekly audio listening. One of the questions we get asked a lot is about younger listening at Radio Centre, about people uh, strongly believing that younger people are, have discovered streaming and no longer listen to radio. They prefer to catch everything on podcasts and catch um, and, and listen to their own music rather than something that's curated by other people. Well, I'm, I'm here to show you that that absolutely isn't the case. 66% of 15 to 24-year-olds are listening to commercial radio. So that's the thing. If you wanted to hit that audience, the, the reach is 66%, whereas it's less than 20 for streaming and uh, podcasts. But let's go forward now or back to actually what's happened during lockdown. So we did some research that looked at commercial radio listeners' uh, habits during lockdown, whether or not they were listening more or less. And uh, we actually rather reassuringly found that we had a huge surge in listening across all the ways of listening to radio. Because one of the things that's unique about radio is that it really is no longer a device in the corner of your room. You can listen to it through your smart speaker, you listen to it through your phone, through your laptop while you're working, and of course in your car. It's the, it's the ultimate multitasking medium. So 38% increase, but who was listening more? So we broke it up into three categories. So that's the newly working from home, uh, which was probably the biggest increase. And that was people like you or me who were used to going into the office every day and put the radio on in the background to keep you company for the serendipity of hearing a song you hadn't heard for a while. And also, of course, to listen to news. The newly, work, the, the newly at home increased a lot. So this is people who may have been furloughed or um, it, we would normally be out and about doing other stuff, but because of lockdown were home, they increased their listening by 43%. And then even the key workers who continued to work, who continued to go out and, and uh, work, whether it be in hospitals or on transport systems or in supermarkets, they increased their listening by 32%. So that shows that they were actually... Uh, wanting a connection to the outside world while other people were in lockdown. This research was also backed up by research from uh, Global and Bauer, who both discovered that they had a surge of listening through online, which is what they can measure. They can see the audience on, on smart speakers, and it and it was it was up by fifteen percent. And obviously, for some stations, that increased by a great deal more than that. So we talk about three phases of this uh, current pandemic crisis. We talk about the shock phase, the bounce back and recovery when it becomes to the economy. I think of it like a traffic light system. So shock was where at the end of March when absolutely everything shut down. You couldn't go anywhere. You could only go out and exercise for one hour a day. We're now in what we think is bounce back, which is just as some of the restrictions are being lifted and they are being lifted bit by bit every day. Um, and that's the amber. So we're just getting ready to go and then there will be an initial recovery. What happens after that? Lot, there's still lots of discussions around that, but we are definitely in what we call the bounce back phase. So this YouGov weekly mood tracker has tracked the nation's mood since last year, but actually, in June 2020, happiness is now on an equal footing with frustration, boredom and stress. So people are actually kind of itching to get out and behave normally again. And it feels like the, the constant relaxations of lockdown that's going on is going to unlock some pent up consumer demand. So we thought we'd look at this, uh, uh, this pent up desire for, uh, to spend and we have, we did some audience research called Bounce Back and Beyond. This is available on our website. And unsurprisingly, social activities and travel topped the list of things that people were most looking forward to spending their money on. 
Now, those are the activities that were most impacted by lockdown. But actually, when it comes to whether they'll be spending more or less money versus pre-lockdown, then the pattern changes. So despite restaurants, bars, clubs, international travel scoring really highly as people as categories people wanted to spend their money on, actually, if you look at it, the dominance of domestic travel suggests that there's going to be a much more pragmatic approach when it comes to the reality of where people are going to be spending their money. But the good news is, is that radio in, uh, really came out well in the same research and it highlights the important role that radio advertising can play in influencing these decisions. So bearing in mind that most people think that they aren't influenced by advertising, these scores are really impressive. So to summarise, we're now moving on to the brief bounce back phase where people will be enjoying the opportunity to unleash their pent up demand uh, to spend uh, on things that they've been missing. But we're now going to show you for the rest of the morning of how radio can play a really important role in helping them spend that money. Thank you very much for listening and enjoy the rest of the session. You can get involved in today's event by posting your questions using the hashtag tuning in or tweeting at Radio Centre. On the way, we have sessions from Global's Creative Director, Joe McCrosty, and Radio Centre's Planning Director, Mark Barber. But our next session is from auto and marketing consultant, Chris Hawken. Chris is a marketer who has worked in the automotive sector for most of his working career, spending 14 years at Volkswagen Group as head of marketing at Skoda, overseeing the Asia-Pacific Volkswagen marketing team and heading up brand and comms at Audi. Chris has more recently worked at Hyundai Europe and Vauxhall. Today, he'll be providing an overview of the auto sector, its response to the coronavirus crisis and what lies ahead for the industry. Hello. My name is Chris Hawken. I've been in the car industry, worked in the car industry for over 30 years. I'm now a consultant in marketing, helping businesses to make their marketing functions a much better driver of business performance, not just in automotive. The radio centre have asked me today to just give you an insight, very brief insight into what's happening in the car industry, how it's been affected by COVID-19 and what the opportunities and challenges are for the industry moving forward. So I think it's fair to say that when we went into shutdown on about the 23rd of March, uh, car sales, not surprisingly, fell off a cliff. New car sales were down 97% in April, 89% in May, um, on the back of the industry having quite a challenging time because of the speed of the move from internal combustion engines, traditional petrol and diesel engines, to electric vehicles, with all the challenges and customer confusion that that's brought with it. Um, and the lack of choice and all the other things. Um, what is positive is that there's an awful lot of pent up demand. I'll show you um, in a moment. And because um, showrooms are large and spacious, the SMMT has done a great job working with government to make sure that car dealerships were amongst the first things that could reopen when we started to come out of lockdown at the beginning of June. So all car dealerships are now open for business. If we just have a look at March's registration, May's registration figures, uh, petrol and diesel down obviously the most. If you look at battery electric alone, they're actually up 12% over last year. Um, and with a number of new electric vehicles to launch this year, I think over 21 new electric vehicles being launched this year, then there's going to be a lot of activity, a lot more activity and a lot more choice for consumers. So as I said, plenty of pent up demand for both new and used. Um, vehicles. If we look at used specifically, used car interest is up 25% according to Auto Trader, and so far this year, and back to pre-COVID levels in just 10 days of dealers opening, according to Indicata. Used prices are holding up well. There's a limit. There's very limited supply. There's no uh, wash through of rental cars coming back in yet. Uh, so very very tight supply. Um, Buyers, new buyers are coming into the market for um, cheaper um, cars to avoid having to use public transport. And in fact, in one of Auto Traders' recent surveys, they found 42% of people want to replace an existing model. Almost the same need a car, um, which they haven't needed before, or need an extra car. And nearly 17% are buying a car 
just to avoid public transport. So plenty of new people coming into the market. And that last one, 17% wanting a car to avoid public transport, has seen a big growth in the value of cars at the lower end of the used car market. On new cars, which is what really matters, very strong growth in sales leads, at least for some brands, and all the volume premium brands are well up on leads. And this is an example of one volume premium brand if I go through the numbers that they've just experienced, and these are from the 15th of June, um, named lead, so that's a lead that comes through to the manufacturer with a name address or email address or phone number. Um, last week, nearly 5,500, up 165% on the same week last year. Over the last four weeks versus the same four weeks last year, they're up 127%. Um, and year to date, up over 24 percent so very very substantial interest in new cars overall this year the market's likely to be down about 30 percent depending on who you talk to it could be 20 percent it could be 30 percent and an awful lot depends on how severe the um, oncoming recession is in terms of some of the challenges that the industry is facing at least and this is not an exhaustive list the number one has to be recession and unemployment the first thing that goes is uh, in any kind of difficulty, difficult times, in uh, is is buying a new car. Probably second second cost only to um, buying a new house. Very large cost and often put on hold. So that's a big threat and a big challenge going forward. New ways of working. We've all become much more um, much more willing to work at home. Much more able to work at home. We've got less dependence on trundling off to an office. Traffic movements are already much, much lower and lower traffic movement is highly likely to continue with less dependence on needing a car. There'll be a move. There's already been an enormous move to buying online. People have got more used to it. Um, and certainly in the short term, people are enjoying buying online to avoid the need to go anywhere near a dealer. That will continue to be a challenge and will be a big move and a big change for the industry moving forward. The speed of change from internal combustion engines to electric vehicles, that will continue. Um, for many, the speed of change has been too quick. Um, it's been too, too confusing for customers. And electric vehicles are really not for everyone. They have a higher, much higher upfront cost. There's concerns re the charging infrastructure. Um, they're not cheap enough. And for many, there's not enough good reason to buy one. And so, as a consequence, many people have sat on their hands and just waited. The weak pound and the ongoing pricing pressure that a weak pound puts on vehicle pricing. Um, and there's a lot of uncertainty coming over the next six months with how, um, how well the government negotiates a Brexit deal and what that does to the future of our trading partnership with the EU. The need to sell more electric vehicles for manufacturers to lower their average CO2 output. That's a very serious issue that's coming in. This year's a trial year. Next year, the fines come. Um, so there's going to be big pressure on all of us to move into electric vehicles. Ad budgets uh, have already been cut, but uh, one of the challenges this year is launching at least 21 new electric vehicles um, and maintaining a good sales mix for all the manufacturers. And the cost of social distancing measures, which one dealer group has, has um, conservatively put at £350,000 extra per month across all their dealerships. So a number of challenges, not exhaustive, but they're some of the most, um, they're some of the most challenging that are coming up now. In terms of opportunities, um, there's plenty. And uh, for the 9 million people who've been per furloughed, um, and saving an awful lot of money. Over £15 billion has been paid off in debt. Um, many people have not been uh, paying to commute to work. They've not been paying for lunches and coffees. They've not been spending any money on shopping. They've not uh, had a holiday and, a, and are perhaps unlikely to have a holiday this year. So the next best thing they can do is go and buy a new car. So plenty of opportunity there. Um, there'll be a big shift to online sales and all the um, benefits and advantages that that can bring. The new Volkswagen ID3 is being sold across Europe, not in the UK, but being sold across Europe um, on an agency model where the price is, um, is the same online as it is in a dealership. There's no haggling. It's one set price. You order the car, 
you go to the dealership for a test drive, the dealer um, delivers the car, the dealer's paid a handling fee, much as they're paid um, a lot now on fleet deals. Um, and that will be a big change that comes in across a, a number of manufacturers over the next few years and is already starting in some European countries with, with the new ID3. There's a large percentage of um, finance PCP, people with cars on finance PCPs where they have to do something, they can just pay it off, but they're just as likely with low interest rates to come in and negotiate another deal and buy a new car and roll on into another PCP deal. There's plenty of opportunity there. The ultra low emission zone compliance, that's already come in in London. Many people find that their car now can't drive across the zone unless they pay £12.50. Um, they'll be looking for a new vehicle to avoid that charge and ultra low emission zones are rolling out in other cities across the UK. There's a number of people wanting to avoid public transport and indeed car sharing. So a number of people coming into the market to look for a car who wouldn't normally have wanted a car. There's the affordability of finance offers, some incredibly cheap down, you know, very cheap cars with a low down payment and a low monthly cost. Why wouldn't you buy a new car? And obviously a government stimulus that's a big opportunity for the industry should it be needed, um, should the recovery be um, difficult, then there might well be an opportunity for a government stimulus to come in. So what does the future look like? Well, in the short term, there'll be a lot more of us working from home. Vehicle movements are creeping up, but they're still very much lower than they were. And that will have a long term impact on car usage. There'll be a move away in the short term from people wanting to use public transport and we're seeing people move now into wanting to get a car for to, to avoid using public transport. We'll see more bike lanes and more shared use of the roads and we'll probably have less car sharing as people continue to try to avoid each other. And of course, there's huge economic uncertainty hanging over us. There'll be a continuing shift towards clean air zones. Um, with charging for non-compliant vehicles. There'll be a shift to more to, towards, towards more electric vehicles, towards more hybrid vehicles, and even to some hydrogen drive systems. And that has to happen so that manufacturers can meet their um, new lower emissions targets. And uh, connected cars will become much more ubiquitous in the future with greater levels of autonomy, building eventually, but probably not in many, probably not in my lifetime, to fully autonomous, fully autonomous cars with no steering wheel. Very exciting utopian future, which I very much hope I'll see the beginning of. So in terms of my final slide, um, it's really to say take advantage now and capitalise on today's optimism. There's clearly plenty of pent up demand that needs satisfying. There's many, many furloughed people, many people many retired people who have money to spend. No one quite knows how grim the future is going to be, so capitalise on today's optimism. And as people, more and more people get back into their cars, obviously make sure that you include radio advertising in your schedules if it's right for reaching your target groups. So if you've got any questions, please leave them where you're instructed to, and I look forward to answering them. But thank you very much. And uh, I hope the rest of the year is very good to you. Stay safe. Still to come, we'll be hearing from music artist and breakfast radio presenter Blur East and Judith Spilsbury will explore T's and C's in radio ads. Before that, our next session comes from Radio Centre's planning director, Mark Barber, who's responsible for developing the industry body's award-winning research. Over the years, Radio Centre has amassed a bank of insight into the impact of radio advertising for brands. Today, Mark will take us through the research that demonstrates how radio can play a vital role in driving business for automotive companies when times are tough. Good morning, everyone. With the threat of recession looming over the economy at least until the middle of next year, this presentation explores how radio can help automotive brands navigate the tricky road ahead, pump up their market share, and accelerate sales. Now that all of my motoring puns are exhausted, I'll move on. Now I'm sure many of you have already seen uh, one of the many um, press articles or blogs or presentations doing the rounds that highlight the importance of continuing to invest in advertising during a recession. Taking it a stage further, Marketing Week columnist Mark Ritson concludes that recessions are as much an opportunity as they are a threat. 
and he believes that the best marketers will be upping, not cutting their budgets. Why is this? Well, recessions create unique conditions that allow smart marketers to disrupt category norms and drive brand growth faster than during usual times. One reason for this is that many brands reduce advertising spend when times are tough, opening the door for competitors to grow market share at their expense. This is because the key behind market share growth at any time is something called excess share of voice, achieved by spending proportionately more on advertising media than your share of market. The opposite is also true, by the way. If you spend proportionately less than your share of market, then your market share declines. IPA analysis demonstrates that if a brand spends consistently ahead of their market position, then over time, their market share grows to match their share of spend. And when your competitors are spending less, it's much easier to boost your excess share of voice. On top of this, recent analysis of the IPA data bank by marketing consultant Peter Field reveals how excess share of voice effects are multiplied in a recession. As you can see from this chart, which compares market share growth at different excess share of voice or ESOV levels during the 08-09 recession compared to the two years either side. The column on the right shows that brands that achieved excess share of voice of over 8% on average experienced market share growth 67% greater than they would have done during normal times. That's why recessions offer such great opportunity for growing market share. So how can radio help motors advertisers in this context? Well, firstly, for many categories, a budget spent on radio buys a much higher share of voice within the medium than it does on other media. For example, this chart highlights how an automotive advertiser spending £1 million on radio in quarter four last year would have achieved a 4.3% share of voice, around 80% higher than the same spend would buy in online display, and more than double the share it would afford on TV. And there's further data from the IPA which highlights the role that radio can play in boosting market share growth. This chart shows the efficiency of campaigns that feature radio in converting excess share of voice into annual market share growth, compared to campaigns that don't use the medium. As an illustration of what this means, a 10% excess share of voice on a campaign that includes radio converts into 0.8 percentage points of annual market share growth, compared to only 0.2 percentage points for campaigns that don't feature radio. Summarised more succinctly, this means that if you're using radio as part of your media mix, you'll grow market share four times faster than if you're not. Now, beyond excess share of voice benefits, there's another reason why this particular recession offers even greater opportunities for advertisers to disrupt the category. People's brand purchase habits are deeply ingrained and difficult to shift. However, research from behavioural expert Richard Shotton shows that people who experience uh, significant life events such as marriage or divorce, changing a job or moving house, are two and a half times more likely to try a new brand compared to those who haven't. So how is that relevant? Well, lockdown has radically disrupted everybody's lives as much, if not more than, one of these more typical life events. And as it is relaxed, this research suggests that the scale of brand switching will be widespread. The main implication being that your customers are more likely to switch to your competitors and your competitors' customers are more likely to switch to you in normal times. So it's vital to land on the right side of this equation. How can radio help ensure you do? Well, firstly, and very simply, radio offers advertisers the best value for money audience delivery. For every pound you spend on radio, you'll be buying at least twice as much audience as you will in any other medium. Or for example, up to 15 times as much in the case of online video. So that's a big head start when you're looking to exert influence as widely as possible with your media plan. Beyond efficiency of audience delivery, Radio is proven to boost advertising effects for automotive brands when used as part of a wider media mix. Analysis of results from 93 Motors campaigns 
highlight how radio significantly boosts overall campaign cut through across a range of metrics, including ad awareness, brand relevance, and brand consideration. So who wouldn't like awareness of their campaign to be 71% higher? Radio is also a highly responsive medium, perfect for when you need to deliver results quickly, either online or in the showroom. For companies aiming to drive people to their website, this chart shows how interaction with Motors brands online is on average 35% higher among people exposed to radio ads compared to those that aren't, with the best performing campaign experiencing an 87% uplift in brand browsing. These effects are pretty immediate too. Over half of all browsing stimulated by radio takes place within 24 hours of exposure to the ads. And radio can have big effects in the real world too, as this case study demonstrates. When VW introduced a special edition of the Passat to help shift stock before the new model was launched, they used radio to reach high mileage drivers in car and communicate the unique features and benefits of this special edition to help stimulate sales. The results reveal how radio had a significant effect on response to the campaign. Compared to before the radio advertising started, the number of visitors to the Passat website increased by 15%. But more importantly, in this instance, radio helped to get more people into VW dealerships to check out the special edition for themselves, increasing overall footfall by 33% across the campaign period. Most crucially for advertisers marketing in a recession, as a result of all of these other effects, radio really delivers on the bottom line. As we can see in this chart, radio delivers higher revenue ROI than TV or press, paying back £6 revenue for every pound spent. And this ROI efficiency of radio means that it can also have a powerful effect on overall campaign ROI. As this analysis conducted on Radio Centre's campaign ROI calculator demonstrates, total campaign is 15% higher when radio is allocated 20% of a £10 million automotive budget compared to when it isn't used at all. Now, this may not sound like a lot, but based on this data, that's an extra £5.9 million added to the bottom line, purely as a result of moving money from other media into radio. So to summarize this brief tour of motors related radio effectiveness research. Firstly, think about how incorporating radio into your campaign can help drive share of voice for your brand and convert that into market share growth four times faster than if you're not using the medium. Secondly, with increased likelihood of brand switching over the next few months, consider how radio can help ensure that your brand gains more users than it loses. When budgets are tight, you need to make sure that every advertising impression has an impact and elicits a positive outcome for your brand. The evidence we reviewed shows how when used as part of a wider media mix, radio helps automotive campaigns cut through more effectively and has an immediate effect on influencing behaviour, be that in terms of online response or joining people into the showroom. Finally, and most vitally when times are tough, Radio is proven to boost the bottom line for motors companies. Allocating money to radio from other media can significantly improve revenue returns from a media campaign while remaining within the same budget. Taking all of these points into consideration, it's clear that incorporating radio into the mix can really make a difference in getting your business motoring again. Now, if you're interested in finding out more or would like some advice on how radio can play a role for your business, then please get in touch. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you very much for listening. Over the last few months, Radio Centre has been working to assist the advertising industry to provide support during these highly challenging times. From new research studies to creative best practice, here's a look at the resources Radio Centre has made available. Over the last few months, Radio Centre has been working to assist its members and the advertising industry to provide support during these highly challenging times. From negotiations with governing bodies, politicians and the public sector to resources for sales teams and media agencies. Radio Centre's Coronavirus Hub is home to multiple tools and resources, including our Radio Bytes series, the latest news and best practice creative examples. 
Radio Centre also commissioned research agency DRG to explore how the coronavirus crisis has changed listening behaviour amongst commercial radio listeners. The study found that 38% of commercial radio listeners are listening to more radio than before lockdown, with audiences tuning in for an average of 26 hours a week, with 90% of listeners saying radio keeps them in touch with the outside world. Time to welcome 2018's President of the Cannes Lion Jury for Audio, Global's Creative Director, Joe McCrosty. Joe heads up Global's award-winning creative team and today we'll discuss the speed and flexibility of radio along with how to strike the right tone during these unusual times. Good morning, hello. Uh, my name is Joe McCrosty and I'm Creative Director at Global. Thank you for joining me today for Tune In. Radio has often been a medium favoured for its flexibility, for its agility, for the speed with which you can go from brief to broadcast. And throughout this period of disruption, I think it has surpassed all expectations in its ability to do that. We were very quick to respond to the crisis, setting up remote studios and voiceover artists who are much more used to coming to our state-of-the-art Leicester Square studios, repurposed bedrooms, basements, bunk beds, sheds, garages, understair cupboards, even airing cupboards apparently. And with the help of as many duvets and pillows as they could find to muffle the sound, they created their own home studios. We've made over a thousand ads in lockdown, but a key concern for advertisers is how to get the tone right. In our research, we saw that lockdown created a surge in three core media need states. These were information and explanation, reassurance and connection, and distraction and escape. So let's take a look at how advertisers have tapped into these need states. And to kick off with, I'm going to share with you as good an example as you can get of this, which is the communication from the government. Here's a montage of some of the messages that we've all heard. Sped up a little because there's a lot of them. Have a listen. This is a message from the government about coronavirus. If you or anyone in your household has a high temperature, do not leave home for at least seven days. This is a vital update from the government about coronavirus. Coronavirus is a national emergency. Only leave your home for the following reasons. To exercise once a day. Don't go to the GP or hospital. Continue to wash your hands regularly. To help save lives, stay home. Only go outside for food, health reasons, daily exercise or to work. It's important we all help to protect older people. This is a message from the government to all essential workers. You're doing vital jobs to keep our country going. And you can now get tested for coronavirus. Virus. You must remain at home as much as possible. Mark Strong. Smooth, warm, easy on the ear, but I think the nation will forever remember him as the voice giving us the government's message. And it's authoritative, it's direct, but it's also really clear and calm. So the government's clearly leading in this space, but supermarkets were also really quick to inform shoppers and get their messages out. And this research here from Very Tonic first aired at MediaTel's Future of Audio conference, which was right back in April, shows just how well these ads performed. Really well. Really, really well above industry benchmarks. So people wanted information. They wanted explanation. And banks were all quick to connect and reassure their customers. But there was one issue. They were all saying the same thing, and so all the messages sounded the same. How could any one brand stand out and take ownership of its message? Have a listen to this montage. With our app and online banking, you can manage your money like you did before. And we're updating our website daily with helpful guides and the latest information on our services. One of the most convenient ways to do this is to use internet banking. It's both safe and secure. You can check your balance, view your transactions, and move money between bank accounts. Plus, we've more than doubled the size of our support team. So, if you bank with us and COVID-19 has affected your business, visit our website for more information. Please be wary of text messages containing links. They may appear to be from legitimate senders like the government, a bank, or a delivery company, but never enter your online banking information or personal details after clicking on a link. From contacting those who are most vulnerable, to setting aside £8 billion of lending to support our UK business customers. Because you are not an island. You are part of something far, far bigger. Now, I deliberately cut the brand names out of those banks, but can you identify any brand in that montage? Normally, this is where I'd ask for a show of hands, but because I can't see you, I put this to a panel of 2,377 people, and unprompted, there was one brand that really stood out. 
it was this one, HSBC. Respondents were able to correctly identify the HSBC ad over all the other competitors in that montage. And what's more, it exceeded category benchmarks for unprompted ad awareness. So even without the brand named in that montage, HSB stood out and it's differentiated by its music, which was created by Jean-Michel Jarre and has been used since January of last year. So there's HSBC demonstrating a really effective use of brand music. But what about voice? Let's have another listen. One day, social distancing will be a memory. Flattening curves will be done at the gym and we'll all be experts in web chatting. Maybe. Until then, HSBC UK is here to help. From contacting those who are most vulnerable to setting aside £8 billion of lending to support our UK business customers. Because you are not an island, you're part of something far, far bigger. To find out everything we're doing to help, search HSBC UK Coronavirus. HSBC UK. Together, we thrive. OK, you don't need to listen to all of it, but we wondered if we might be able to improve on the brand's connection with listeners if we re-recorded the voice. So same script, same voice, but with a real focus on delivering a much more human connection. This is what it sounded like. One day, social distancing will be a memory. Flattening curves will be done at the gym and we'll all be experts in web chatting, maybe. Until then, HSBC UK is here to help. From contacting those who are most vulnerable to setting aside £8 billion of lending to support our UK business customers. Because you are not an island. You are part of something far, far bigger. To find out everything we're doing to help, search HSBC UK Coronavirus. HSBC UK. Together, we thrive. There's a big difference between addressing an audience and actually connecting with customers. The re-record showed a 19% uplift in relevance, a 10% uplift in likability and a 7% uplift in authenticity. So this really reinforces the importance of casting and direction, even if the recording's being voiced in a broom cupboard. And now, turning to our final need state, distraction and escape. In times of disruption, when things are unfamiliar, we find comfort in what is familiar. And there's a great opportunity here for brand to remind us why we love them. So this is just an idea, something that we mocked up for one of the nation's favourite brands. We wanted to see if a bit of escape and distraction or light-hearted playfulness might have an impact on brand consideration throughout these uncertain times. Here's the mock-up. Me, you, step, pa, um, st, the, we, jib, tub, saw, s, a, ma, no. I A F Y O A O A D D A Y O U A S T A A Y O U A S T A A Y O U A S T A A Y O U A S T A A Y O U A S T A A Y O U A S T A A Y O U A S T A A Y O U A S T A A Y O U A S T A A Y O U A S T A A Y O U A S T A A Y O U A S T A A Y O U A S T A A Y O U A S T A A Y O U A S T A A Y O U A S T A A Y O U A S T A A Y O U A S T A A Y O U A S T A A Y O U A S T A A Y O U A S T A A Y O U A S T A A Y O U A S T A A Y O U A S T A A Y O U A S T A A Y O U A S T and relevant. But what's more, we saw a significant uplift in brand consideration for Heinz, which went up to 65%, and a 205% uplift in product consideration. And as the nation's moods and attitudes shift, let's take a closer look at motors. As we emerge out of lockdown, we've recognised that buyers' attitudes have shifted to three main mindsets. Backburners, have decided to put up purchase for the moment, so it's important here for brands to maintain a share of voice. Switchers, those new in market, switching from things like public transport, so increase relevance by writing specific copy that reflects the different lifestyles and needs of the listeners. And deal chasers, those looking for offers, so making it more important than ever to combine smart targeting with impactful communication. And our research showed the, the th one of the things people are most looking forward to is seeing friends, visiting family, meals out and things that just allow people to spend time with their families. Lockdown has been challenging. Here's an ad that empathises with parents who've had to homeschool. Dad, what's an adverb? An adverb? Well, pfft, 
easy. It's, it's like it's, it's like a double verb. It's, it's like a verb squared. But it's like buy one verb, get another verb free. <laughs> it's like you wait all day for a verb and two come at once. The last few months have been tough enough. That's why when you buy a Dacia from our available range, you get the first three months on us with zero deposit. It's two verbs. It's a verb verb. PCP and HP Dacia Finance, 6.9% APR representative with three monthly payments as cash back on select and new vehicles only subject to state. And what's more, new legislation means that T's and C's can be a bit more concise. You don't need to say subject to status over 18s. And with a few cuts, you could cut this caveat further still. Now, I'm not going to dwell on that because I know Judith is covering it in much greater detail. As we emerge out of lockdown, our moods and attitudes will continue to change. And it's radio's ability to address the needs of the nation in a tone that reflects the mood of the nation that has been driving success for our advertisers. As Siobhan Kenny says, these need states also help explain the continued resilience of radio listening across a decade of intensifying competition. So radio is tried and tested by our top spending advertisers. And it's now producing some extraordinary and unmatched successes for new advertisers. So radio is proving now more than ever to be an infallible medium. I'm out of time now, so thank you very much for listening. And if you do have any questions, please get in touch. Thank you. Still to come, Radio Centre's Camilla Kamara will explore the importance of a consistent brown sound. But first, we welcome Judith Spilsbury. As Head of Training and Special Projects at Radio Centre, one of Judith's roles is to work with advertisers and regulators to ensure that T's and C's on radio can be understood by the listener. Today, Judith will discuss how to make your T's and C's on radio more effective based on FCA-confirmed industry guidance. Hello, I'm Judith Spilsbury, and I'm going to talk to you about some of the work we've been doing on T's and C's on radio advertising. Over the last few years, a lot of our work has been focused on the motors sector, and there are a number of reasons for that. Firstly, typically motors, T's and C's tend to be 60% longer than the average for other sectors. And the other thing is that when there's a financial offer involved, those T's and C's become longer again, and typically by up to, to 50%. So this is the engagement trace for a 40-second car ad. An engagement trace is a measure of the extent to which a listener is actively engaging with the content of the ad itself. The T's and C's in this case start roughly 20 seconds into the ad. And what you can see is within about five or six seconds of the T's and C's starting, the listener starts to just zone out and and stop paying attention. So is any information going in at all? Well, at Radio Centre, we've done a lot of research into how T's and C's um, work in radio advertising. And the, the main finding is that when T's and C's become too long and too complicated, important figures get lost. So typically, less than 4% of listeners will recall a really important piece of information like the total cost of credit when that is embedded in lots of other T's and C's. And that kind of defeats the objective of having them there in the first place. So if T's and C's are too long and complicated, listeners are just not going to be able to absorb or recall the information. And here's the thing, after some initial discussions with the FCA, we carried out a very detailed analysis of over a thousand motor scripts on radio. And what we found was that roughly two thirds of motors regulated scripts included some terms which weren't technically needed in order to comply with FCA regulations. So what we knew we needed to do was to find a way of clarifying for advertisers how to reduce the T's and C's where possible to make them easier for listeners to absorb whilst making sure they were still compliant with FCA rules. And so after a a lot of discussions with the FCA's policy and supervision teams, we were really pleased that earlier this year we got final sign off from the FCA to publish our FCA confirmed industry guidance. And if you have a look at our website, you'll find it there. There's also a link to it through the FCA's own website. What is FCA confirmed industry guidance? Well, It's basically a way of illustrating ways that advertisers can comply with FCA rules. As you can imagine, for our FCA confirmed industry guidance to be published, um, it had to go through several stages of scrutiny by the FCA, and quite rightly, because it was really important to get this right. Um, Three things I would would, um, point out um, relating to our own guidance. Firstly, 
Um, this is not about replacing FCA rules. This is about respecting them. Crucially, it's about maintaining the FCA's overriding principle of ensuring financial promotions remain clear, fair and not misleading, but getting them to work in the radio space. And it's also about cutting out those T's and C's which aren't really needed. And the guidance actually lists a number of terms which, which often crop up in motors, T's and C's, but aren't always required. So what does that mean? Well, to illustrate, I'm going to play the example of a dealership ad, which we've made up, by the way, um, with some typical T's and C's at the end. The new Brand X Titanium could be yours for just £159 a month with an initial £1,200 rental payment at Brand X Dealership, Roehampton. Personal contract hire agreement, £1,200 initial rental plus 47 months at £159. Subject to status, 18s or over. Total contracted mileage, 32,000 miles. Excess mileage charges and return conditions apply. You will not own the vehicle. Offer ends 31st August. So seemingly quite a simple message, but quite a lot of T's and C's at the end. So what I want to do now is go through stage by stage to illustrate how this guidance can help you reduce the T's and C's or at least simplify them to make them easier for the listener to, to absorb. So, so let's go. So for example, subject to status or 18's or over, those are times the consumer would see a standard and expect to be included in any contract. So you don't need to state them here. Um, also, as long as it's clear in the ad that this is a hire agreement, you don't need to state personal contract hire agreement in the T's and C's. If you have any doubts and want to make it clearer, you could add something like yours to lease into the main body copy of the ad. The other thing is, if, this, if it's clear this is a lease arrangement, um, you don't really need, you will not own the vehicle um, in the ad itself or in the T's and C's. Um, Mileage, excess mileage charges is an interesting one. We had quite a few discussions with the FCA and also with the Financial Services Consumer Panel. And the general conclusion we drew was that the consumer generally expects any financial arrangement like this to include a mileage limit. And that if they went over that limit, they would pay excess charges. Um, so you don't really need this in your ad unless the price that you are quoting is based on a, a mileage limit, which is below the typical mileage you'd expect for that car. And the only other observation I would make is there is a tendency in motors, T's and C's to include information which has been inclu included in the body copy of the text um, when you don't need to do that. So, for example, here, the monthly cost and the initial rental payment um, has already been stated. What hasn't been stated, however, is that this is a four-year agreement. So you'd need to reflect that in your T's and C's. So there you have it. Um, not only clearer and simpler T's and C's, but just have a listen. The new Brand X Titanium could be yours to lease for just £159 a month with an initial £1,200 rental payment at Brand X Dealership Roehampton. Four-year lease. Offer ends 31st August. Conditions apply. They also sound so much better. So thank you. I hope you found that useful. Do have a look at the FCA Confirmed Industry Guidance for Motors Brands on our website. Um, and do, if you have any questions or can't find it, um, do get in touch. Thank you very much. Goodbye. If you have a question for Judith, post it using the hashtag tuning in or tweeting at Radio Centre. Our next session comes from music artist and radio presenter Fleur East in discussion with Hits Radio's programme director, Paul Gerrard. Fleur will discuss how radio and brands can work together to deliver effective branded content. Hello and welcome to Fleur East, who over the last few months has been presenting her brand new breakfast show, Hits Radio Breakfast, from her home in lockdown. But as well as that, has been doing countless TV appearances on shows such as Lorraine, The One Show to name a few, releasing brand new music and even gate crashing people's Zoom meetings whilst they're at home. Hi Fleur East. Hi. <laughs> How are you getting on in lockdown then? Lockdown has been a life changer for so many different reasons. I couldn't comprehend doing a breakfast radio show from home in lockdown, but with amazing technology and an incredible team, we've managed to broadcast every single morning. And it's been so much fun. I've actually enjoyed being able to do breakfast show in my pyjamas, to be honest. 
<laughs> and the, I think the, the beauty of it is, I mean, you're doing your show from five different locations in a morning, but it's been great for listeners to get an insight into what I guess is just real life, really, in a normal household. Yeah, I think it's been very relatable, particularly during this pandemic and in lockdown, because we've been working from home as well as so many others around the UK. So having them listen to us broadcast and we set the scene that we're in our pajamas and we're broadcasting from our living rooms or our bedrooms or wherever we are has um, definitely given it that authentic feel. And we've been able to connect with our listeners on a, on a completely different level. I think what also makes radio really special is just how trusted it is. You know, you can be there in the darkest of times and boy, don't we know these last few months have thrown some real curveballs at the way we've lived our lives. And I think hearing you guys go through that has, you know, comforted people um, in a really special way. I mean, how do you feel like you've had to adapt over these last few months? I think we've become even more authentic during lockdown because you know, you can't fight the situation that every single person is in. So it's a unique situation um, affecting the whole world. And we've been able to just be real about it, be true about our experiences, even from our first experience of going to the shop or the first time we saw someone wearing a face mask or getting on our first Zoom with our family. And I remember actually we got a phone call from a florist during lockdown um, this particular lady was preparing bouquets and flower arrangements for funerals during lockdown. And she was so, so upset and deeply emotional about her situation. But she called us up and told us that she was listening to us every day. Um, and she was actually preparing the flower arrangements. And she was close to tears actually talking about her day-to-day -day activities and how it affected her. But she said that we were the light in her day and we actually helped lift her spirits and helped her get through it. And to hear something like that and to have such an emotional connection with someone like that closely and that intimately is, was really special. And I think we found more and more people turning to radio for that really is an escapism from what's going on. But I think something that you've done an incredible job with uh, more recently is actually using your platform to help change things for the better as well and tackling issues that you know perhaps other media would shy away from i think radio is very good at talking to an audience in so many different ways whether it be making them laugh making them cry but also to re-educate them and i think the work you did around black lives matters is so important in that do you want to tell us a bit about how that came about so we have our feature, Rap Roulette, every Friday, where I get challenged um, to write a rap on a topic selected at random, and I'm given 24 hours to write the rap. Now, we've covered a range of topics, <laughs> from the most silly things to quite serious topics. So we went from doing a rap on the British Bake Off and getting Paul Hollywood to come on the show to then rapping about something really serious and very important, like Black Lives Matter. Um, the raps tend to be quite lighthearted um, to lift everyone's mood. But what I found really special was that we could use that feature to tackle really important issues such as this. Um, and it actually went on to have quite a major impact. It's probably one of the most engaging pieces of content we've put out um, as a breakfast show. I think... I think we often say that radio was the original social media because it just creates a conversation, whether that be a conversation when somebody's scrolling through their phone, uh, whilst they're listening or whilst they're in the car and they just start talking to somebody else. And I think that power to be able to tackle anything, whether it's something as simple as a bit of showbiz news to make people laugh, have some fun with a caller on the phone or tackle an issue that actually can make a fundamental change to the way we live is really powerful and shows what an engagement with audiences can deliver. Um, and that leads on to some of the amazing work that you've done with, with commercial brands. And I think what, what's really powerful is how somebody can come to us and say, look, we want to do something. We want to do something really different, be part of something fun and engaging, as well as, you know, get our message out there. And it's fair to say that the audience really trusts you, don't they? Yeah, you almost build 
a friendship with listeners and a relationship because ultimately they're, they're waking up and listening to you every single day. So because we reveal so much about our lives and so much about our experiences, it's almost like they're listening to a friend every single day and they know so much about us. I remember when we did our Hits Live event and we had a commercial partnership with Open Reach. And I'll never forget being tasked <laughs> with going out into the arena and selecting somebody at random to win an iPhone. And at one particular event, I literally had to select someone at random out of thousands in the arena. And I managed to pick a girl whose birthday it was that day. So not only was she excited to be part of our Hits Live event, and to be an avid follower of our breakfast show. But we put a massive smile on her face by giving her a prize at her, on her actual birthday while also promoting a brand and having a really successful partnership in that way. And so it's, it's fun to be, to be a part of exciting relationships like that. I think everyone's a winner when something like that happens. And I think looking around, you know, Bauer's portfolio at the moment, you know, we've got some amazing brands working with our breakfast shows, you know, Absolute's partnership with Wix, who've been sponsoring that breakfast show for years now. And it's it's that integration with the breakfast show because I genuinely don't think there's anything stronger than being live and of the moment, is there? And that's something an algorithm on a streaming platform just cannot create i mean what do you love about live radio that would work so well for a client perhaps ah oh, i just love the element of jeopardy in a way <laughs> there's nothing that really compares to being on air live and you're getting the action and it's in real time and it's a direct connection with whoever's listening I totally agree, Fleur, and I think that's what makes radio really powerful. It's that sense of community and the fact that it's always evolving as well. And I think one of the great examples of that is how, you know, we've recently evolved and developed our brand new automotive content team. Now, it's called Auto Venture, and what it's great at doing is connecting you with our editorial teams and our insight teams and creating really powerful standout pieces of branded content. So take a look at this. At Magic, we believe there's more to life than just work. And the new Skoda Octavia is the perfect partner to a versatile lifestyle. Absolute Radio. Leona Graham. The no guarantee. With the Dacia Duster. It's won a bunch of fancy awards. That's why we call it the award-winning Dacia Duster. Peaceful, isn't it? That's the sound of a Toyota hybrid in pure EV mode. Save cash on your next car with ArnoldClark.com. No, you've got it right! It's the right answer! <laughs> <laughs> National Tire Safety Month. Listen to this. I've decided that I'm going to get my tyres checked by Pro Tire because they're the professionals. They know what they're doing. Nick Snaith on Magic with Shell. You could win £1,000 every day next week thanks to Shell. Show us how you're getting back on the road by playing our general knowledge game and you can be a big winner. Despite our best efforts, we couldn't take all of you to the Isle of Wight Festival. However, this weekend, we'll be doing our utmost to bring it to you instead. It's thanks to Enterprise Rent-A-Car. Whatever the mission, they're there to help, whether you need a van to move house or fancy something fun for the weekend. Over the years, Radio Centre's research has proven how a strong audio brand can boost the effectiveness of an ad campaign and increase the brand recognition. So we teamed up with audio producers Bounce to create Radio Centre's audio brand, including a sonic ident and brand song. The audio brand has already been used in radio ads, podcasts, online videos, and even right now at Tuning In Livestream. With the ever-growing possibilities presented by an innovative audio-focused future, Radio Center plans to make the audio brand a key part of its identity for many years to come. Up next, we have Radio Center's Insight Manager, Camilla Kamara. Camilla is responsible for delivering the research and insight function and manages Radio Center's bespoke research. Today, she will explore the importance of a consistent audio brand. As you will have heard earlier, 
Audio branding is something that's very important to us as an organisation. It's something that we implement into our own advertising. But why is it so important and how can advertisers develop their advertising to make it even more effective? Now, when we're talking about brand assets, we're talking about the non-brand name elements that trigger the brand into the memory of category buyers. So, for example, a visual brand asset might be the use of a logo or the use of a particular font, whereas an audio brand asset is referring to things like musical cues or the use of sonic triggers. We know from analysis from Ipsos that 92% of ads use distinctive visual brand assets whereas only 8% of ads use distinctive audio brand assets. So there's very much a disparity here. We also know from Ipsos study The Power of You that distinctive audio assets make advertising much more effective, indeed more effective even than visual assets. So this presents an opportunity for advertisers to develop their audio assets and make their advertising work even harder and become even more effective. But how can brands develop effective audio brand assets? According to research from Radio Centre, consistent ads are effective ads. When we look at the top five creative features of effective campaigns, consistent uh, ideas, cr consistent creative ideas, musical link with TV, consistent sonic, these are all the markers of the most effective campaigns. A big reason for this is that listeners <laughs> are deprived of one sense sight. So consistent audio assets help them to understand quickly who it is they're speaking to. A great example of this is McDonald's. Um, we often associate McDonald's with their golden arches, but we also associate them with their um, audio brand cues. The I'm loving it catchphrase and the sonic trigger that accompany, accompanies it um, has been around for years and they've maintained that while still being able to keep the creative fresh and flexible and adaptable to the campaign or to the audience. <laughs> I'm loving it. I'm loving it. But the value of consistency extends beyond TV. So if we look at campaigns uh, that did not include TV, consistency is still key. Consistent creative route, a consistent voice actor, consistent music, the same logic applies. Autoglass are a great example of a brand that has done this. For years, they advertised almost solely on radio and they had a highly successful, highly profitable campaign uh, using a consistent construct, a consistent voice, and of course, this jingle. Autoglass repair, autoglass replace. We also know from research at Goldsmiths University that ads that use uh, music consistently are more engaging. So if you compare ads that had consistent use of music, so music that you would usually associate with the brand, and you compare that to tactical use of music, so one-off music or no music at all, then we see more brain activity in consistent use of music, showing that indeed it is more engaging. And consistency boosts ROI as well. Um, once again, if you compare campaigns that do not link their TV counterparts uh, to those that do, then indeed return on investment is higher. Now let's look at some examples in the industry. We Buy Any Car uh, have used consistently this sonic trigger. And of course, Audi with their being ahead through technology catchphrase. Audi. So in terms of audio branding, we know that audio brand assets are more effective than visual brand assets, but only 8% of advertising uses distinctive audio brand cues. So there's very much an opportunity here for advertisers to develop their creative further. But consistency is key. Being consistent with audio brand cues across ads and across media makes advertising much more effective. That's all for tuning in Automotive. To find out more about Radio Centre's work or to get in touch with the team, head to radiocentre.org or follow Radio Centre on social media. Thank you for watching and we hope to see you again at one of our real live events when it's safe to do so.